One of my happiest childhood memories was in the backyard on my swing set. I lived in Wayne, New Jersey. It was in the early 19, 1970s. And I lived on a great big hill on Terhune Drive. In my backyard, my grandpa Saul and my parents, they built me and my brother a great big swing set, two swings. My brother and I would spend hours on our swing set. We felt like we were superheroes, swinging so high that we could touch the sky. And what happened is that all the other kids in the neighborhood, they would come to my house and play on my swing. There were lots of kids. We'd have to take turns on the swings because there were only two of them. And then my grandpa Saul, he would come from Fort Lee, New Jersey to my house in Wayne and he would sit on my swing with a cigar in his mouth and he would relive his childhood memories next to me on the swings. My backyard became a community playground and it was a very magical place. I like to think of a playground as a metaphor for the type of community and society that we all want to live in. It's one that stems from kindness and compassion, respect and dignity of everyone. It welcomes the body you were born into, the body that you are living in today, and the body that you will live in in the future. It's where friendships naturally form and they happen, somewhat magically. It's a place where being an upstander is not only paramount, but it is celebrated. It is a place that we all deserve to be able to play in. And goodness knows, more today now than ever, this type of place is desperately needed. If we think about it, we are all wired and connected and plugged into our, device, our devices. We respond to that beep and that buzz and that interruption right away. We have to like, send back a message for that social media post. We are connected, but we're not connecting in real life. We're disrupted. We're not engaging with our children. We're not engaging in real life with one another, and we're not engaging with our seniors. And may I make a suggestion? Why don't we all just take a pause for a moment and go on one great big play date to the playground, that magical, utopic place. There are such profound benefits to physical play. Think about swinging and spinning and swaying those motions. It's actually called vestibular movement. And it has enormous benefits to all of us at any stage of our lives. When we're growing in the womb, we're whooshing around and swishing around in the womb, our brain is actually developing. And at that time, we're even learning a sense of balance. And when we're swinging and we're swaying like I did at my house when I was a little girl, our brains are developing and we're, we're actually developing a sense of body awareness and the surrounding areas around us and how to balance and how, and how to move our bodies. And the research behind vestibular movement, it is strong. Just 15 minutes of rocking or spinning and swaying has an impact on our brain for at least six to eight hours afterwards. And when you see grandma sitting on the porch swinging and rocking, she's actually staving off Alzheimer's. And when our grandparents or our seniors are regressing with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, guess what they like to do? They like to swing at the playground. It triggers long-term memories. And in some cases, that exercise, that movement, can ward off the progression of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. We think that as grown-ups, we, we really, why would we go to a playground, right? If we're teenagers, we're grown-ups, we're seniors, why would we go to a playground? The reality is, is that you actually have not outgrown the playground. The playground hasn't grown with you in mind. And if you have a disability, sadly, it's never been built or designed for you. According to the CDC, 
one in every four of us has a disability. Think about that for a moment. 25% of us has a disability. You know somebody with a disability. And it is a group that any of us, any of us can become a member of this group at any time of our lives. And chances are, if you live long enough, you too, you're going to become disabled. When we think about people with disabilities, we're typically thinking of those who are physically disabled. Think of someone in a wheelchair or a walker or a mobility device. The reality is, is that most of us with disabilities, you can't see the disability. It's invisible. So think about people with cognitive disabilities, like autism. Autism. You all, you all know somebody who has autism. One in 68 of us are now being diagnosed with autism. One in 68 children are being diagnosed with autism. And in Silicon Valley here, it's one in 45. Think about those with attention, attention deficit disorder, sensory challenges, the medically fragile, those with visual or auditory impairments, our aging population, our seniors. This subset of our group has been left out of play. And not only have they been left out of play, but their family members and their friends and their community, they've been left out too. I want to take you back to the early 1990s when the Americans with Disabilities Act came alive. The Americans with Disabilities Act is a civil right law that prohibits discrimination against people with disabilities. In a nutshell, it, it says that you need to be able to have access to public, to public things like the workforce, transportation, even the public playgrounds. And so what happened in, when the Americans with Disabilities Act came to life, we thought that these were these gold standards. Hooray, people with disabilities would finally have civil rights. And when it came to playgrounds, the playground industry responded by creating what we call post and platform play structures. You know these play structures. You see them in all of your public playgrounds, and you see them in your schools. I call them rat mazes. You go onto the structure, you climb up it if you can access it, you slide down and you come back and you do it again. With the Americans with Disabilities Act, it was all about accessing the play equipment. So how does this affect somebody with disabilities? Here is a gentleman on a wheelchair, and he is disabled. He can get off of the wheelchair, sit on the play structure. This makes the playground ADA compliant. Think about that for a moment. He can sit on this structure. It's a lonely place to be, and it's somewhat humiliating. ADA also said you needed to be able to do something while you're on the playground. A talking tube. You can go, hello, hello, and you can hope that somebody is on the other side to greet you. This makes the playground ADA compliant. But if you think about, if you think about it, this is access, right? But most people with disabilities, they can access the playground, right? They can play on it, but there's not a lot of play value. And if you happen to be that 1 in 68 or that 1 in 48 um, with autism, this type of play structure could not be any more of a nightmare for you. It's confined and it's frenetic and it's busy. So I want to introduce you to someone very special to us. This is Ava Villarreal. Ava is now 16 years old, but she's cognitively less than a one-year-old and she's undiagnosed. When Ava was a little girl, 
Her mother, a beautiful mother, Olenka, was told that she needed to swing and sway Ava to get that vestibular movement for her brain development. And when Ava was three, she could no longer fit into the bucket swings at the playgrounds in Palo Alto, but she didn't have the cognitive ability or the upper arm strength to sit on a typical swing. And so the therapists were saying to Olenka, you need to swing your daughter. So she was taking Ava from Palo Alto to San Jose to the one and only physical and occupational therapy place to swing her daughter. She was spending $160 an hour out of pocket. Insurance didn't cover it. And she was swinging her daughter. And she thought this was really crazy. I should be able to take Ava to my public playground and swing her along with my other daughter. So she went to the city of Palo Alto and said, where do, all the, where do, where, where do the kids like Ava play? And where can I take both of my daughters to play? And they said, well, all of our playgrounds are ADA compliant. It was that typical playground that you saw before. For Ava, it wasn't about access. She simply could not participate on the equipment that was in her public playgrounds. And Ava and her mother were the spark that created Magical Bridge Playground. Magical Bridge Playground is located in Palo Alto, California. It is heralded now as the nation's most innovative and inclusive playground, welcoming visitors of all abilities, all disabilities, all sizes, all ages. It is a place where absolutely every body can play. It is a magical place. It was designed, it was called universal or mindful design. It was designed for every single person in mind. It's divided into zones because predictability matters, especially for kids like Ava, especially for kids with autism or with visual impairments. Predictability is super important. If you want to go down the slide mound, you go down it. If you want to avoid the slide and go to the spinning zone, you go there. It also has a swinging zone, a kindness corner as a reminder that we do need to be a little bit more kind and compassionate in our communities. It has a stage and an innovation zone where it's gentle sounding music plays through a laser harp. It is beautiful and magical. It is fenced in because there's safety issues with playgrounds. Some kids and some adults like to bolt and run. Colors matter for depth perception. It is a place with retreat spaces because a lot of kids with autism want to retreat and slowly come out when they're ready. It is a place that respects everybody and there's some entertainment that happens there as well. <laughs> it is a place that respects the body you were born into, the body you're living in today or the body you'll live in in the future. It's a great place. I hope you all come and visit <laughs> often. <laughs> if you build it, they will come, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase that. If, they, if you build it using universal and mindful design, thinking about every single person, they will come and they will love the place. And then they will demand that more places get built like this. Magical Bridge is expanding to Redwood City and Sunnyvale and Mountain View and Morgan Hill, right here in Silicon Valley. And later this year, we will be expanding around the country and around the world. If they build it, they will come and they will demand more, and then you will receive worldwide recognition. Magical Bridge is now featured, was now featured at the Smithsonian in New York City, at the Cooper Hewitt Museum, at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. We represented Silicon Valley's innovation at the World Economic Forum. And, next, and later this year, we'll be um, at the Carnegie Museum in Pittsburgh. This is the kind of world and the kind of place that we all deserve to live in and to play in. It's the kind of society we want to belong to. If I could wave that magical wand, here are my three wishes for you. First. You now have the knowledge about inclusive playgrounds and inclusive spaces, right? You can be an advocate 
for your community. If you hear about a playground that is going in in your school or your public playgrounds, please encourage them to put in equipment and design it for everybody in mind. Second, I hope that we never have to use the word inclusive or accessible when building something as vital as a public playground. I want to be included, and I am sure you do as well. We all want to be included. We don't go to a special needs or an inclusive Nordstrom's or Starbucks. There is no reason when you're building a playground it should be a special needs playground because we don't believe there's anything special about needing a place to play. And finally, go out and play. The benefits of play are so profound, and I promise you that the memories you create on the playground with those you love, you will remember those forever. I thank you, and I hope you have a magical day.